So here's my next project. Uh, let's call it a rat rod renovation. I picked up this uh, Minimos last week behind my shoulder for about the price of a case of beer. And I thought, eh, you know, 50 bucks, that's a good price. But on closer inspection, it needs a lot of work. So what I've decided to do is do a really, really quick reno on this, uh, bring it back to life, and uh, make it my rat rod sea fleet. So come on, I'm going to show you a, a, a tour of what this boat looks like and hopefully what I uh, plan to do with it. So let's have a look at this. This particular boat is the iconic William Jackson Mini Most. It's 8 feet long and 4 feet wide. And on the surface it looks like it's in okay shape. But I'm going to show you what needs doing here. The steering wheel mount is in pretty good shape and the decking is not too bad here. It's a little um, spongy, not, not spongy but, but flexible and it leads me to believe that the decking was made out of 8th inch cheap Luan mahogany plywood. If I go near the transom part, you can actually see where it started to really delaminate here. But it's not too bad. And if I press underneath here, I don't know if you can see it uh, pushing up a little bit. So there is some flex to it. So this is not a big deal. This I can simply sand down and refiberglass. And if you look carefully here, you can see that there is a thick coating of fiberglass cloth on it right there. The other side of the boat, yeah, needs a little more work. There's actually a hole right through it, but not terrible. What I really like though is the tuck tape here that's been applied to the seams. And if I start to peel that off, it reveals a little more damage there. Uh, yeah, I can see a hole through there. What's interesting is there seems to be fiberglass cloth that was applied to the entire surface of this boat. However, I believe this boat was left out in the elements. Because if we start to inspect the transom area here, you can notice that there's some major work that has to be redone here. The actual motor board seems to have cracked away from the transom area and right here it looks as if there's a big crack right down there and if I get in closer here you can see there it's come apart from the transom as well. But here's the cool thing, if I go to the back here you can actually see right through the transom. Looks like it was built up with 1x4 pine or 1x4 something or other but uh, it'll probably leak unless I do something right here and big crack right in there there I can see right through it there we go I'll put my hand through there here's my fingers on the other side so I think I have to fix that here's some more tape on the hull part here uh, I've got some uh, lifting handles but I have to replace this motor board reinforcement. Inside the hull, yeah, lots of uh, paint flick, flecking away here. And I gotta fix all that. But if I start to push on the inside here, uh, yeah, everything is starting to come apart. What I'm hoping is that the stringers are solid. Underneath, it looks like the main frame seems to be in good shape. That seems fairly solid. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the boat over and actually inspect the condition of the sides 
and the hull because that's where it gets really, really nasty under here. Some parts are deceptively uh, pretty good, in good shape. In other words, this side here seems to be fairly solid. But the other side, yeah, that's gonna need some work. Okay, check this out. Gotta say, this is the first. All sorts of uh, tuck tape on here. I guess this was supposed to be a quick way to waterproof it. It's soaking under here. This wood stringer here is just sopping wet. Got to say, though, I'm quite surprised at how sticky this tape is. Can't say it's a very good waterproofer, and it's not epoxy, but whatever works. Ugh. So here's the hull, and uh, more tape here, and more tape here, and as you can see, the it's kind of delaminated a bit. Lots of tape here, and some checking here. So needless to say. The hull needs replacing. And if I start to look at this wood, it's not spruce plywood or fir or mahogany. It's this really cheap Luan door skin material here. And because it's been left out in the open, um, I could pretty well put my finger through there. So that's kind of what the hull looks like. And if I look at this side here, again, it needs a bit of work. Not too sure what was holding this together. See here. Oh yeah, look at that. Ah, there's a hole in it now. You think this side needs replacing? Maybe air conditioning. The good news is, is that the chines here are in really, really good shape. So, here's the plan. I am going to, well, let, let me put it this way. For the price of a case of beer, I got a really, really good boat. Except for the hull, both sides, and the transom. But it's going to be an interesting project. And I'll keep you updated on how it goes here, but this is definitely going to be my rat rod flea. We're going to get this in the water as quickly as I can and just have a ton of fun with it. So, stay tuned. This ride's going to get bumpy, but it's going to be lots of fun. Here's what I love about restoring old boats. You really get to see how they were put together originally. And not unlike other sea flea builds, three inch glass tape was put on all the seams here. Right down the gore on this mini most here and right along the, the, the uh, seams here. But what I found very interesting was there's a seam in the plywood right here, which means that they're two separate sheets. There was one sheet of plywood from about here to the nose and then a second sheet down there. And in fact, anybody that has built the Minimost or the Minimax knows that this should be all one continuous sheet. 
um, chances are this was just a quarter sort of half round sheet here and that kind of explains why well two things one it's very cheap plywood it doesn't have a lot of structural strength but because it's sectioned here as well and chances are it's sectioned over here there's no real strength in this part of the boat so anyway I'm gonna continue on I'm having lots of fun ripping this thing apart here um, I can't get over this tape this is brilliant and uh, I'm gonna strip everything down and uh, see how it uh, goes from there so the rat rod restoration continues hey quit kicking that epoxy in our faces that man is the worst boat builder on the beach listen here bud i smashed your vessel only the hole's so skinny it might dry up and blow away the big bully i'll build a better boat someday oh don't let it bother you little flea boy darn it I'm sick and tired of being a sea flea weakling. Charles Ballast says he can give me a real sea flea hull. All right, I'll gamble some plywood and glue and get his free building book. Four to six weeks later. Boy, it didn't take Ballast long to firm up my hull. What a solid and strong transom I have. That bully won't make fun of my epoxy now. What? You here again? Here's something I owe you. Oh, Mac, you are a real boat builder after all. Gosh, what a stir. He's already famous for it. So this is why I wanted to be very careful pulling the uh, hull off around the curve. I want to keep this part right here and I didn't want to damage this so that's why I used the heat gun. I took the uh, three inch fiberglass tape off and this wood, it, it, it's not perfect but I want to keep this safely as original as possible. I know that sounds bizarre because I'm practically replacing everything uh, but I do like the deck and, and uh, I want to retain, retain some of the originality. So I'll sand this off and uh, I'm going to keep going here. I am. I'm uh, still mucking away on uh, converting this Minimos that I bought for the price of a case of beer. Like I said, I'm going to turn it into my rat rod. Uh, currently working on um, stripping out the uh, transom area, and it's pretty rough. So uh, let me uh, let me uh, show you what I'm doing here. Okay, I've got most of the uh, plywood hull removed. Still have to sand out and take out a lot of this crap here what I found really really interesting was that the hull was nailed on with these very very tiny finishing nails here I'll see if I can pull one out for you uh, let's see here's one right here and they are there there it comes there that's kind of it. There it is. 
right there. They're about three quarters of an inch or an inch long and they're just these very tiny finishing nails and that's those are the nails that the whole hull was uh, put on with, the uh, plywood hull. The good news is that these uh, side bits right here are uh, fairly intact so I'm not going to replace those, I'm just going to sand them down. Um, I do have to replace this uh, entire side here but I've decided to keep this side. Um, it's probably the only part of the hull that was not dry rotted out and uh, it's just going to make my uh, uh, rat rod renovation look kind of cool here. So like I said I still have some of these things to take out. What I'm working on right now is revealing the transom and a uh, little bit of uh, dry rot going on here and again some uh, checking you can actually see right through it so I'm uh, using my heat gun to uh, take off this old paint and fiberglass tape and then I'm going to sand it down with my 40 grit sandpaper and see what I can do. I don't want to replace it. I just want to fill it up and then I'm going to try an epoxy or sandwich another sheet of uh, plywood over top. So I'm going to continue on here. So as you can see, the parts of the transom here are kind of punky. Uh, a little bit of a dry rot going on and uh, right in here got a huge hole and I think that's because the uh, motorboard support plate on the inside somehow came loose and it's probably uh, put everything out of kilter here. Like I said I really want to avoid replacing this whole transom uh, because then I'm gonna have to take off all of the stringers and the uh, and the uh, top decking so I'm gonna sand this down I'm gonna fill it in uh, with uh, uh, high density epoxy filled, uh, 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 epoxy that, that's uh, mixed with high density filler and then I'm going to sandwich another quarter inch piece of plywood over top of here and hopefully I can salvage this thing. So let's see what my uh, 36 grit sandpaper can do here. Yeah, this is going to need a lot of uh, filler, but hey, I've seen worse. Well, maybe I haven't. I don't know. So I'm going to keep sanding away. Like I said, this side seems to be pretty good here. So I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to keep it the original red. And I'm going to work on re-strengthening this transom here. I'm going to take out the uh, drain hole brass sleeve. And then as you can see here, the uh, motorboard plate has, I don't know, bent away from the transom. And it's split here. So I'll probably have to replace that. But I'm not going to do that until I reinforce the whole transom area. But I think it can be done. So I'm going to carry on here. I'm still sanding away here and things are cleaning up quite nicely, but I just want to point something out. There are two types of adhesives that I absolutely can't stand. One is the Sigaflex, and uh, viewers of the website will know that I just had a real problem with my Minimost XL and the Sigaflex. The other thing I can't stand is this freaking Gorilla Glue. Here. And I don't, they use Sikaflex, they use glue, they use Gorilla glue, they use tuck tape to put this whole thing together. Um, nothing wrong with that, it's just, it's just not going to hold together. But the Gorilla glue is here and it foams up and I can literally pull off this board here that's been fastened with the Gorilla glue. 
and it's just useless stuff. They may say it's waterproof, but it doesn't hold. It's just flying off here with no pressure at all, and the plywood laminate is just separating from the main structural supports. So don't use Gorilla Glue. It's just, I don't know what it's like. It's kind of like expansion foam. That's really all I can see. So there it is there. Just no pressure at all. And it's just peeling off like that. So don't use Gorilla Glue. It's awful, awful stuff. So the first thing I'm doing with this transom is I'm just brushing in some unthickened epoxy because I really want this to soak in to the wood grain here. And then what I'm gonna do after it soaks in is I'm gonna fill it with my high density filler. I want good adhesion in here, especially at these dry rot places here. So this is just straight west system epoxy and I'm really pushing it in. Now unthickened epoxy does not have any real strength to it. It's when you add the high density filler that you get the strength. So before this sets up, I'm gonna mix up another batch and thicken it up and then start to fill the holes. In fact, when this is done, the epoxy will be stronger than the wood itself. Like I've said in other tutorials, this has to get mixed to the consistency of peanut butter. This is still way too thin. A few moments later. Well, after searching around, it seems as if I'm out of more high density fillers, so I don't want this to go to waste. So I'm gonna mix in some low density here. Obviously this won't be as strong, but keep in mind, I am gonna put a another sheet of plywood over top of here. better already. So that's all I'm going to do for now. I'll let this harden up, sand it flush, see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. 